Okay, uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to be introducing you to uh, some of the live uh, MIDI um, samples that uh, are provided that we can start messing around with. Um, so let's get started. Um, as you can see, I'm in session view currently. And um, what I did was I went to the Ableton website, uh, which is a very, very helpful website, and I'll actually be making a note of it later in, a, in another tutorial. Um, I went to the Ableton website and I downloaded the Live 7 Legacy Pack. Um, uh, I already have it installed and um, as you can see it includes a bunch of different one, uh, folders. It has drums, keys, mallets, uh, strings, synth, uh, sound effects, and voice. Uh, I'm going to keep it simple for now. We're going to go to drums and um, we have a whole bunch of uh, drums sorted by acoustic and electronic. I'm going to go to acoustic, and I'll just go to the first one here. Um, and let's see. I'll just uh, double click on this file here. And as you can see, um, it has uh, it's thrown it over into uh, the session view for us to work with. And uh, if you look down here um, at the bottom of the window, you'll see the MIDI notes that have already been programmed into uh, the file. So. Uh, let's just go ahead and press play here and hear how it sounds. So we have a pretty simple uh, drum beat going. Um, like I touched on uh, in the first tutorial, if you want to change the beat per minute of it, um, you can go up to uh, the tempo and either slow it down or speed it up. I'm going to keep it at 120, the default for now. Go ahead and press stop and go back to the beginning by double clicking on the stop button. Um, a couple quick things to note, um, as you can see the drum, um, the MIDI drums started its own track here um, and that allows you to control, uh, gives you some preferences to choose from. Uh, down here at the bottom of the track uh, is where all the important stuff is. Um, this bar right here, if you see me click and drag it, this is the track volume. This is the volume that is specific to the track. Um, if you want to just turn down the drums, if we had more uh, tracks uh, on here, um, this would just turn down the track volume and nothing else, or uh, the drum volume, I should say. Um, if you want to turn down the whole project, come all the way down uh, to the bottom right over here, and this is the master volume here, and you can alter that uh, to your liking. Um, this yellow button here, this yellow square, it's called a track activator, and what it does is that it um, just like it says, it activates the track. If you click on it once and you can see the yellow goes away, that turns off the track. So that will um, that will shut it off for the time being um, so that you can focus on other tracks if you have them here. Um, I'll just turn that back on. Uh, the button below it, the, uh, the little S icon, it's called the solo slash Q. Uh, what that does is that it kind of singles out the track. Um, if you click on it, you'll see that the other tracks here with the yellow squares have disappeared. Um, and it disables everything else but this track so you can only listen to this track. Um, it's good when you want to hear a specific thing in the track you're working with and you don't want to go through and click all the yellow buttons or turn all the volume down for all the other tracks you're working with. Um, this knob up here, if you click and drag, uh, you'll see that this is uh, the pan um, knob. Uh, and it does just like you know what your car stereo does, uh, moving it, uh, the panning from uh, left to right. Um, you'll see that it turns orange uh, when it's different, uh, when the panning is actually activated. So we're going to go back to and make sure that the color is back to gray. Um, and that way we know that it is uh, that it's centered. So um, if you want to take, uh, we have our MIDI file here, and if you want to edit it in any sort of way. Um, You'll go, you would want to go down here uh, into, uh, really, I guess you could call it, you know, the MIDI preferences uh, down here, or the editor, I should say. Um, and if you want to mess around uh, with the different MIDI notes, you want to alter them in any way, um, you would want to do that here. So um, you have a couple options in front of you. Uh, you could use the notes that, uh, that are already programmed in here and alter them. Um, you can see... If you go to the orange notes and you go right up along the edge of one of them, you'll get uh, this sort of bracket uh, cursor. What you can do is you can make the notes uh, longer by clicking and dragging. And as you can see, these notes will 
they'll get bigger, they'll get shorter, um, and that is one way of altering um, uh, the tracks. So, um, another way that you can alter these notes is if you go up to the top where the uh, play, stop, record buttons are. You can see now that now that we're in session view and we're we have some uh, some files to work with. You see this little pencil icon up here. And if you click on the pencil icon, this is the draw tool. Um, and what you can do with that is, is you can come back down here to uh, to the editor, and if you just click on here, you'll see that it adds it adds notes to to the track. Um, this is probably the preferred way. Uh, it's a lot quicker, um, and it allows you to create. Um, you know, create new tracks instead of working with the old ones. Um, and as you can see, I'm just clicking again uh, inside the the pink or orange or whatever color you want to call it uh, square uh, to get rid of them again. Um, a little handy feature uh, when you're editing these uh, MIDI tracks is you'll see this little tiny icon right up here as I'm circling the cursor around it. Um, it's a little picture of uh, headphones, uh, and if you click on that, and activate it you see it turns blue and what it does is that it plays the specified note that you are uh, currently adding or subtracting from uh, the, the track and if you see here right beneath the headphone icon you see it almost looks like a sideways piano here with these white keys and what those do is a it's like a little preview button almost uh, and these are all the different instruments that are involved in this MIDI track and if I just click on one here you'll see that uh, that's one of the, the you know the kicks. Uh, we'll go to like another one down here. We have a lower one. You go up hot, and there's a hi hat, um, and that kind of gives you a preview, so you know what you're adding to the track before you uh, before you go around drawing and everything. And the same thing happens when you're in the editor. Uh, we still have the draw tool activated. If you click in here, it'll play it for you, uh, so you know what you're adding or subtracting. Um, very convenient. That allows you to, to know what you're doing, basically. So I generally have that on uh, the whole time. Um, it can get a little annoying after a while if you're really adding a lot of notes and you just keep hearing it constantly. Of course, you can always just deactivate it again. Um, so a couple other things. Uh, if you look uh, in this uh, the MIDI editor still, uh, we have loop activated, which will loop uh, the track. Um, obviously, if we deactivate it and we play playing again. If we turn loop off midway, you'll see that it stops. Uh, this, if you click on the very top of the editor, you'll see this sort of, um, I don't know, it's like a bar with two arrows at the very end of it. And this is, this up top specifies how long you want the loop to be. Um, and you see if you went, if you go to the far corners of that bar, gray bar up on top you'll get the bracket icon again and you can click and drag and this shortens the loop uh, shortens the track the track doesn't uh, shorten itself it's just the loop so um, as you can see I pulled it more towards this side if we press play just let that go and you'll see that it's uh, shortened instead of being 16 go down to 8 here so it's half um, so if you ever want to shorten uh, a MIDI track, one of the Ableton MIDI tracks, you can do that. Um, you always want to make sure that uh, you know you're not going over. Uh, I'll just as an example, if we turn up the volume here, jack it up really high, you'll see that it turns red. And that's not what you want. That's called clipping. And uh, when you go to export your audio. Uh, it'll clip that. Wherever it turns red, it'll, it'll just kind of stop and you'll hear crackling and just general distortion. And that's obviously not what we want. Go ahead, you know, and edit away. Um, add more, you know, use the headphone, uh, you know, add a whole bunch, edit to your heart's content. Um, and uh, our next tutorial will be focusing more on remixing.